Today, guys, we're gonna be doing the ultimate food tour here in Saigon with these lovely ladies here. You wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name is Ngung. Ngung. Hello, okay. my name is Hong. Hong. Like Hong Kong. Like Hong Kong. And we obviously got Carolina here. <laughs> so this is a all-female-led yes. tour operator called EXO Tours. And today we're gonna to be doing the EXO foodie tour. Yep. And we're actually gonna be doing it in style on the motorbikes just over here. Do you want to bring us over to the motorbikes and show us uh, everything we need to know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so before we start the tour, let me show you how to get on and off the motorbike safely, okay? Mm -hmm. So before getting on and off the motorbike, please always do it from the left side. From the left side, because, okay. Because like there's a hot spot from the right side, it may burn your leg, unless you want the second feet tattoo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and after getting on the motorbike, you can put your feet at the foot right from both sides and always keep them there even when we stop at the red light. Okay. And if you feel nervous, you can hold on to the back of the motorbike here. And then for the lady, you can hold on to our driver. It's the like best trick for the lady. <laughs> and for you, you can also hold but onto your stove. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, you will be alive. Awesome. Okay. And if you want to touch her or you want to look around and touch to one another, you can move your head. Don't move your entire body. Okay. So you can see that you are not allowed to dance on a motorbike. No dancing on the motorbike. Okay. <laughs> Got it. And then we also have the helmet for you, but bigger size for foreigners. So the EXO tall helmets are here. So nice. You want to pop this one on? See this one fits? Yeah. How do I look like? Oh wow, it looks yeah. really good. Yeah, actually looks really good. Ready Hong? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready Nong? Ready. Let's go, let's go. Always ready. Alright ladies first. So we're actually heading to District 5 first to have a delicious bowl of noodle soup. I think it's a meat noodle soup. Hello. So the great thing about this tour, which Hong was explaining to me, is that we're not going to be going to District 1, which is where all the tourists go to. We're going to be going to more of the local places, right Hong? Yeah, and five main district in the city tonight. So we're talking about District 5, District 7, and then this is six, this is eight, and this is four. Okay, so we're getting the real local experience that you would find hard to do by yourself unless you're with locals like Hong here. Yay. It's gonna be 18 kilometer driving tonight. Oh, lots of driving then, yeah. and lots of eating. For the traffic here, the busier, the safer. Because when it's empty, the people here, we tend to drive really fast and then it makes it dangerous. That's why we do the spa full time at the rush hour, because it's at the busy time and then the safe way to go. I feel safe. I'm in good hands. And you're also grabbing very tightly onto the back of the motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> you can see guys, the traffic here in Saigon is absolutely mental. So many motorbikes everywhere. And actually Hong says that it's safer when it's busier, right? Yes, because we cannot drive fast. And it's like an organized chaos. Yes. <laughs> organized chaos. We love Vietnam. Okay guys, we have made it to District 5. This place has a special place in my heart because I actually lived in District 5 when I was an English teacher here in Saigon before the pandemic. Then the pandemic happened and they closed all the schools overnight and I had no other choice but to head back home to England. So it feels very nice to be back here. This is the first time being back here. And I think we've made it to the first spot. Yeah. So we come off from the left side. Is that okay? <laughs> All right, here we go. The service is amazing. Thanks, Hong. I love your uh, uniform or your your dress. Yeah. What is this called? Like yeah. the name for the dress? Yeah, the name Ao Yai. Ao Yai. Ao Yai. Yeah. Because it's had a long dress like this. Yeah. It makes it feel beautiful. Ao Yai, and I I'm guessing this is the place. Yep. Okay, so. Yeah, you're ready. Yes, we're ready to eat. We've come to Fu Vang. Yeah, yeah. Fu Vang. Yeah, we're going to eat Okay. Xin chào. Xin chào. All right. Beautiful. We've got our uh, little kind of limes and spices ready. Oh, beautiful. We have a drink. Yeah, we had some jasmine IT to eat the heat of Saigon. So first of all, I want to say congratulations. You made it here and still alive. <laughs> We're alive, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're currently sitting at a local noodle restaurant in District 5. And the reason why we choose this restaurant is because at EXO, we are on the mission of empowering the Vietnamese lady. So all of the restaurant we choose to work with, we try to like uh, empower the Vietnamese ladies and 
vendor. Power to the ladies. Yeah. Power to the ladies. And also, like, a lot of the restaurants in District 1, they always westernize the flavor. Uh -huh. And then at the local area, usually, like, eat the recipe from generation to generation. So you can have the original uh -huh. taste of the Vietnamese The authentic food. Vietnamese food, yeah. not yeah. westernized. Mm -hmm. And we have actually been greeted with, uh, this is Jasmine oh, yeah. iced tea. Yes. Jasmine iced tea, so cheers. Yo, <laughs> mm. Okay, nice. and then like uh, for the whole two tonight, aside from me and Ngong, we will be leading the whole two tonight. We also have two bodyguards. We got the secu yeah. security guards. <laughs> security. So, if you see a few men in black bullying, keep looking at you, don't worry. They are not the Saigon gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. The reason why we need them in case that one of our bikes is broken and they will help us to change another bike immediately okay. so it doesn't affect the timing of the tour. And also please not worry if they keep standing around you while you're eating because we are taking you to a lot of local restaurants tonight and we want to make sure no one tries to ask for your money but save you to buy something and you have to politely reject them. Yeah. And also another team they will come to each restaurant first before we take you to to set the chairs at the table ready, make sure the drinks are cold and the food is hot and we can have no zero waiting time on the table. Uh, okay. Okay. So feel free to come up to like the support. We are. That's what I love the most about Excel. We have the mail to help. Yeah. <laughs> We've got literally like a whole kind of security detail. We've got our tour guides, lovely tour guides here, and then we have the security. Show your muscle. Show the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> so our first dish, guys, is bun bowl hue. So Hong was saying that the Bo means beef, bun means the uh, noodle, so it's beef noodle soup from Hue. Wow. And wow. So it's a little bit different to pho. Yeah, and now you can look like uh, the noodle inside. You see the round and thicker noodle, not the flash one like in, like in pho. So it doesn't get soggy, even if it sticks in the soup for a long time, and it doesn't make you full easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you see the wide long pork here is the, the pork sausage with pepper this is pork sausage wow yeah. nice and then like we have three main kinds of vegetables mm -hmm. together with bumbo hoi i guess you know this one right yeah it's bean sprouts yeah. good job uh, the brown one I, uh, some sort of mushroom no. <laughs> no i was gonna say mushroom but i don't know what is it guys it's like it's the sorry banana flowers <laughs> oh it's banana flower banana and this okay. one this one is this I know, I know. It's uh, the more popular. Yeah, the most popular. Have. It's. Uh, I forgot, but if you say the name, I will know. When you wake up. Morning glory. Yeah. Morning glory. Yeah. Morning glory. Yeah. There we go. So we combine this with the yeah. soup. So there are no set rule of how much of the vegetable you have to add it to the soup, and not to put it much, a little, and you like. And if you like spicy, you should definitely add this one. This is the homemade sade chili oil with garlic, which is made for this dish only. But we can put it a little. Just a little time. bit, otherwise. Unless you want the sexy lips on the soup. You want sexy lips? <laughs> <laughs> This is our first time trying Bun Bo Hue. So Nong and Hong actually explained everything about the dish to us. So all the things I'm about to say to you is from them. So this is a beef noodle soup that comes from Hue. And actually the first thing we want to do is add some of these uh, vegetables. vegetables. So I'm going to go for some of the morning glory here. And you can actually just add it, dip it in with the sauce or with the, the soup. Sprouts. And this was the banana flower vegetable, so we can just like mix it in. So interesting. And I think you mix it in with like the soup there. And then I think we give it a go. We've got some of them noodles there. I'm assuming they're in rice noodles. What I mm. actually love is the beef. Mm -hmm. So much of it. And actually, off camera, Hong actually put some fish sauce into here. She added some chili uh, sauce, some uh, lime just over here. And you can actually dip the beef from the noodle soup into that. So it's like you're having a noodle soup, mm. but you're also having a, a good amount of protein. And the broth is so flavorful, right? It's a bit sweeter than the other soups that I've eaten. It's very different to pho, very different. Mm. 
It's got more like a, feels like a more of a prawny flavor to it. Yeah, and I can taste the pineapple. <laughs> oh, there's pineapple inside as well. So I'm gonna get that sauce just over here and dip in the beef and give that a go. Hopefully it's not too spicy. Mmm, that's delicious. Hello. <laughs> There's a little baby who's running around here. But this is actually not too spi uh, spicy. Mmm. Very good. So after a little bit of spice, you can actually cool yourself down if you need to with the jasmine iced tea. Very refreshing, especially because it's very hot here in Saigon. Yeah, but it's very good. I really, I'm really enjoying the soup. I'm gonna give this another go. I'm gonna go deep into the bombo way. And you can see all the delicious noodles there. Mmm. Mm. Super fresh. And it's actually quite light. It's got a bit of a prawny flavor that goes well with the soup. And actually, I've been told, again, this is not my research, this is a pork. Sausage. Sausage? Let's give it a go. It looks like a rice cake, but it's not. Mm. I thought that would be a rice cake, but actually it, it tastes like sausage. More like a fish cake. Mm. It tastes more like uh, porky compared to the soup, which is a bit more like a prawny, beefy kind yeah. of flavor. Yeah, I love it. It's actually kind of like the explosion of flavors. Mm. Lots of different flavors hitting your palate. Super delicious. So Hong just shared with us a very uh, touching story about EXO and how EXO helped her through the pandemic. Do you want to share a little bit about that, Hong? Hi, <laughs> okay. so like uh, I was born at the underdog one, so we never have any how of our host. And then five years ago, before getting married, I decided to get a bank loan to buy an apartment for my parents mm -hmm. as a wedding gift. And then like uh, right at the moment, we was at the most beautiful time of our life and then COVID came up. I lost my job and I almost lost my apartment and then like because I can't finish the like uh, interest rate every every year and then my company helped me they give me a loan for free mm -hmm. so yeah. I can keep my apartment. So you, and that was basically during the pandemic EXO closed for three years and so they had to let go of the staff they but with Hong, because of a situation with buying the apartment for your parents, yeah. uh, they were they gave you a loan for free, yes, so that you could make sure that you can keep the apartment for your parents, and so that's why you have a close uh, feeling uh, towards, the towards the company. Yeah, I feel like it's not just a job, but it's it's like uh, someone that changed my life when I walk like here. Family. Yeah. Okay. So like, uh, if it wasn't done, then I would be a homely person. I will never carry out my dream of having a house of my own. So we have security helping us out. Hong, why do you love having the male security? Because they do all of the heavy job for the lady. It's not easy to find those men in Vietnam, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we have our security detail. <laughs> there we go. So they actually follow us around make sure that uh, we're safe and that basically we have a great experience and also supporting the ladies with the motorbikes. If there's any issues with the motorbikes, then uh, these chaps are here to help out. All right, off to the next place. Are they? This is the service. Putting the helmets on. Mm -hmm. And we're off to a market, right, Hong? Yep. All right, let's go. Oh, helmet. <laughs> I bought it for you and I forgot mine. Safety first. We need the EXO helmet. <laughs> so Nong is ready with Carolina. We got our security ushering out. And now Hong's got a helmet. Hi, you're here. Oh. <laughs> because we are not allowed to take our hair like this is going to flow to our gate face. Oh, right, okay. All right. So they really do pay attention to the small details here. So they make sure the hair is tied up so it's not flying in our face. All right. Let's go. Next up, guys, we're heading to a local market. We're yeah. going to do a little bit of shopping. Yeah, we're gonna take you to buy some tropical fruit. Buy some tropical fruit? Yeah, not the watermelon or the dragon fruit that they always serve at the hotel. So, so something some, new. Something new. Yeah. Something fresh. Fresh content for you guys. And we got Nong and Carolina having a little chit chat, a little gossip. Yeah. <laughs> chit chat, chit chat. So I love on this tour that they bring you to local places and they actually bring you to places 
where you won't typically go to. So you'll, you'll end up basically trying foods which you never would have tried unless you come on experiences like this with XO. This is pretty crazy, guys. Which district are we heading to? Uh, we are going to District 6. District 6? Yeah. So this highway here, guys, the longest highway connecting District 6. Yeah, and connect a different district together. So one oh. of the longest highway in the city. Wow, so it's connecting all the districts. That's why you can see all the motorbikes. Okay. This area here, guys, they're selling lots of Christmas decorations, getting ready for Christmas. Every single store is selling decorations. And you can see there's a lot of traffic. But Nong and Carolina there. The beautiful thing about being on a motorbike is that you can actually experience the culture here, the how they live. Whereas if you're in District 1, you just see kind of the business area, the kind of tourist area, whereas you're really seeing the real life here with all these motorbikes. It feels like you're actually living here. And actually, if you can see, there's just chock-a-block full of traffic. And behind us as well, look at that. Absolutely mental, guys. Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, so we're trying to navigate through. Hong's doing a great job. She's an expert driver. But the traffic's coming from every single angle. Ah, there's a school here on the right. And it looks quite like a temple, you see? A school. Because we are in Chinatown, so the school it looks really like a temple. Oh, uh, so we're in Chinatown, which is District 5. Mm -hmm. So the schools look like temples. You can see all the school kids just finishing wow. school, I'm assuming. And, uh... The uniform. You were riding a motorbike since uh, how old? <laughs> since I was 12. 12? Yeah, don't let my parents know. <laughs> in England, you can't drive until I think 16. I mean, so, maybe it's 18 yeah. now. Uh, as a rule in Vietnam, when you come at 18, you need to get the motorbike license. Yeah. But before 18, everyone knows how to ride because of the peer pressure, I guess. Okay, because to get around everywhere, you need a motorbike. And you see how people they can carry stuff on their motorbike. Yeah, you can see like over here, this guy's carrying carrying a lot on his motorbike. So we've made it to a local market called Sum Voi Market. You can see there's just chickens just over here, just like this, just hanging out on the side of the street. So Hong, you were saying that not even local people know about. Yeah. this market you must be a real Saigonese you have to be real Saigonese to know this market and we're between district 5 and district 6 yep. and we're literally we're, you can see fresh seafood it looks like some eels and uh, you got chickens so you buy your live chicken on the left side they make it like this on the right side clean and clear so it's fresh chickens and then unfortunately dead chickens but it is a wet market and uh so not many tourists would ever come here i mean i've never been here and i actually was living in district five but you can see super fresh seafood oh the fish he tried to escape <laughs> we've actually we've actually seen that a few times uh, a prawn tried to escape they literally jump out of the uh kind of a uh, little pool of water and that fish tried to do it as well so we also have motorbikes coming through again you can see the way the local go shopping they just stop at one vendor and everything on their motorbike bring home to cook okay so it's like drive-by shopping it's like a drive-through hong it's like a mcdonald's drive-through <laughs> they just pull up and you know they they just do their shopping yeah, so like you just only need three basic stuff, do what you like, and then pay money, bring home to cook. <laughs> okay, and actually Hong was saying that uh, a lot of tourists go to Bentan Market, and with Bentan Market, you can actually find that the prices there are two to three hundred percent more than if you actually come here. And a lot of the vendors in Bentan Market actually buy the produce from here and then market up at the Bentan like. 
basically tourist market. You can see very fresh vegetables. I'm gonna move to the tropical fruit area. Okay, so we've come to get tropical fruits. We're literally surrounded by fruits. It's a very nice Is it like smell of fruit. In Manta Market, like uh, with the same money, you buy one fruit only, and here with the same money, you buy one kilo. Wow! Yeah, everything has a price per kilo. And they have the prices here, so. Sometimes, I think in Bentan, they don't always have the prices. I think it's, yeah. maybe they just tell you a high price and then you negotiate and then you're still paying a high price. Yes, but you just contribute to our economy. The vendor loves you. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Okay, okay. now we're going to buy some tropical fruits. All right, let's go buy I'm, some tropical fruits. I will try to find something that you don't have in your country to try. Okay, so we're going to be going for hopefully something completely unique that we've never tried yeah, before. Yes, you don't have it in your country. You know uh, what it is? Like the one I mentioned, you, yes, you remember. Like milky remember? apple. Right. Yes, it's yeah. milky apple. I've never, I've never had a milky apple. I've That's interesting. I've never heard about this, but they shared this information beforehand with me. Okay, so that's how you know, yeah. knew about we that. We only have it once a year. See, in the season right now, so I'm going to buy like a few for you to try. Okay. And we will over there and try something different. Different, okay. Okay, I'm looking at you. Oh, look one. And let's see what else. Have you ever tried the crystal apple? Crystal? Crystal apple, the green one. Never, I ne I've never even seen this fruit before. It looks like a cauliflower. Oh well, no, a cauliflower, sorry, a broccoli. Yeah. It looks like a broccoli no, stem. Kind of like cauliflower as well. Not a mix. So okay, we're mix. gonna buy some too. Okay. okay. Now let's see I feel like I've been brought into a whole new world. Which... So you know why like some fruits are on the round floor? Like on the floor and then some are on the in the cell. Uh, I don't know why. So there's some food that there's some fruits on the floor, uh -huh. and you're saying some are on the shelf. Shelf. Uh -huh. I have no idea. Tell me. Because these are imported, so fancy. Ah, so fancy, yeah. fancy, local. And higher, <laughs> higher prices. And higher prices, <laughs> higher prices. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, I love how they're explaining everything. It makes it really interesting and knowledgeable, but also fun. See people up. Have you ever tried this one? Have you ever uh, tried this one? That's a dragon fruit, right? Yeah, the dragon fruit. Dragon with fruit. the red one. Uh, oh, it's a red dragon fruit. Yeah. Yes, I tried the. I think I've tried both of them. Oh. But I'm a bad example because I uh, I've spent a lot of time in Asia. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Carolina's never tried the, the pink one. Ooh. I don't think so. No. I only tried the white one. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, it's so beer. we're gonna buy some. Your favorite. Beer. Yeah. So your favorite's the favorite. the dragon fruit with the pink one. The pink. What about the white one? The white one. But this one is sweeter. It's sweeter, oh, yeah. Sweeter. I like sweets, yes. Okay, you got me there at sweets. <laughs> Hello, my I just find it interesting, Carolina, how people are literally driving through on motorbikes and it's set up like a road system yeah. where they can like just drive by and buy whatever they need. Okay. And now let's try our Vietnamese cherry. This is a cherry? Yep. Oh, we can try it? Yeah, that's why I love the vendor here. Very friendly. Friendly, okay. All right. Let's try this. Uh, there are three seeds inside, we didn't leave the seeds out. So this is a Vietnamese cherry? Yep. It's sour and mm. sweet. And when you make it in a uh, juice, it's really good. A little bit sweet? Like Hong said, a little bit sour? Yeah. Got like a crunchy texture? Yeah. Doesn't taste anything like a cherry from back home. Mm. Nice. Yeah. We have never tried this, it's called Longan. Yep. Longan. Yeah, and in, Vietnam, in Vietnamese it's called nhãn and nhãn is mini eyes because it's how it looks exactly when you open. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> how should I eat it? Like this? Yeah, we'll, you yeah, bite right. it? Like yeah. maybe? We'll peel, we'll peel it yeah, first. Right. Like that? Yep. Ah, right. Oh, it's like a almost like a lychee inside. So you can see I kind of broke into it there. Ooh. It's like the eyes. Like the eyes. Yeah. Right. Like it it's like lychee. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, right. I don't want to eat that part. And then with this oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. So it literally looks like the eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that inside. That's why I said it's called nyang, and nyang in Vietnamese means eyes. Oh, I mean, they were eating eyes. <laughs> Don't worry, these are the vegan type. Vegan type of eyes. Mm. And this is a rambutan. Yeah. We got a rambutan here. Oh. 
Was it like this? Mm -hmm. like we loved it in Indonesia. What should I do with the seed? Yeah, I can just, uh, okay. Again, I'm gonna bite this open. There we go. Oh, wow, juicy. This one's a juicy one. Your tea is so hard. Yeah. Okay, that's. In Vietnam, we steer the sweet can with our tea. Like that. Mm. You can't go wrong with Rambutan. Oh, thank you so much. I don't want to litter on the. I don't want to trick it on the floor. Oh, wow, very good hospitality. Okay, let's grab that. Everything's so well thought out. Was that from you or the vendor? From the vendor. Oh, the vendor. No. Wow. Oh, we lost power. <laughs> we lost power. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think it got disconnected. It's something very like popular in Vietnam. Yeah. Power Blackout. up and then water off. And then yeah, come on. Come no, on. come on. You were saying it's common for the power and water to be off? Yep. How come? Is it something like very common in our country? I don't know why. So if you it just switches off randomly? Yep. Okay. So if you heard everyone say, yeah, it means that like water pack or power pack. It's back? Yeah. Okay, so if we still see these lights kind of turn off, then we know why, because it just happens randomly here in uh, Vietnam. Can you eat this one? Oh, is that like durian? Yeah. I, I've tried durian a long time ago. You like it? Not so much, no. <laughs> but Carolina's I never. I guess you like the smell of it. <laughs> no, I'm not sure about that either. But um, Carolina's never tried it. Ah. So uh, we got to try that. Like uh, I haven't tried it in maybe five, six years. Ah. So maybe my taste buds have changed. Uh, yeah? But you know, like it's considered like uh, the more expensive fruit in Vietnam. Expensive, okay. You know what they are? No idea. Carolina, do you know what, what this is? That is. This is the orange. Yeah, oh. the inside is orange color too. Yeah. Wait, so it's green but it's orange? Yeah, yeah. inside it's orange color. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? I said that like, I just told you inside orange color. Oh, inside, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to persuade me to buy one kilo. One kilo, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like it's less than 50 cents for one kilo. It's only 8,000. Wow, 8,000. So it's less than like 50 cents. Right? 50 cents for one kilo? Yep, yep, yep. Wow. <laughs> All right. Come on. People here are super friendly. Vietnamese people are very friendly in general, but here at the market, you don't feel like you're uh, kind of just a stranger or someone who's not welcome. Very welcoming. And the, you see all of the spices we cook in the meat food? The sun has set, it is now night time and we're being lit up by all the motorbikes. We've come to another area, popular area of District 5. So this is where people come to buy their... Their chanels and wutong. But the fake one. The we fake make, one. We make really good coffee. Really good copies. So if you want your fake designer goods come to this area here in district 5 and it's common to see the police chasing them away yay so if you see everyone running backing and then the police are probably on their way and they are going to get in trouble okay. so the good thing is that when you go shopping here you get really good price but uh, they only for you have to know that when they run you run together yeah everyone has to run <laughs> so I love how it's all lit up here in this area Actually, I'm pretty sure I used to live close to here. So it's really interesting guys because this area of District 5 looks super familiar to me. And it's because I actually lived in this area for four months in Vietnam. And I remember spending all my time here because I was just teaching here at a language English language center uh, called Apollo. And I would spend all my time frequenting the streets here and having the street food. Really good Chinese food here because it's still Chinatown. District 5. That's why it's actually one of the, maybe one of the biggest Chinatown in the world. And now you can see how big it is. 
It's massive. We we're on District 5 on the other side of the city. Hello. <laughs> they are drawing your attention to their shop. Yeah. Very competitive. And since that when the police come. Oh, the police came and he had to pack up and leave. So here there is plenty of food options as you can see on the sides of the roads. Also a lot of places to uh, shop here. Bringing back a lot of memories from you guys. First time I'm back to this area in four years since the pandemic. Like I said, they closed the schools down overnight so I had no choice pretty much but to go back home. But it hasn't changed. It yeah. looks very similar to what it was like. Uh, it's considered one of the busy, busy. Oh, it was down there. here. It was down here. Yeah. I lived down there. Yeah. It was called the Common Room Project. I was staying in a ah, hostel. I know it. I know you it. You know it. Common Project. But I think the owner uh, changed. Oh. Yeah, I think he left. It's really hard during the pandemic because of the high cost of renting. So and, not everyone can afford. And places like that, which are for tourists, there's no tourists. They have no vis business. Yeah. Like EXO Tours, it closed for three years during the pandemic. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, we closed nearly two years, I guess, or two and a half years. Okay. So there's three stages to becoming a EXO tour guide. Yeah. One, you've got to be a woman, right? Yeah, you have to be a drunk driver. You have to be a strong, independent, powerful woman. <laughs> and then, uh, so you, what are the three stages? So like uh, the first interview rally, uh, your driving skill. So like you will have to carry the big tall security guy and also following the tour until you remember the route. And also they want to test your driving skills so you can stay balanced really well even when you carry someone really big. Okay. And the second interview rally, your English skill because like uh, one guest is gonna have one driver and the tour is about four and a half hour long. So you wanna be speaking and yeah. conversing in English to make mm -hmm. sure the the, yeah, the customer is happy. <laughs> yeah, and then like whenever they make question, and then you're able to like deliver the information and make explanation. And the last one is the personality test because at ISO we are ladies, so we want to make sure everyone love each other. When we walk here, we get along well and know how to leave our comfort zone. Okay, so that's how that's the perfect ingredient for why we're having such an amazing tour right now. Yeah. It's, it's down to these ladies and they're selected for this and right now it's absolutely mental <laughs> look at the traffic it's literally stuck i can feel people touching me from behind because the mirrors are so close to me this is insane so right now we have crossed the bridge we're entering a new district. What district is this, Hong? District 8. So we're entering District 8. You can see all the motorbike action here. Is there a barbecue? We're going to be having barbecue. Yay! So oh, I'm happy about that. I love my meat. And also like karaoke. District 8 is very famous for barbecue and karaoke. Okay, because so if you want to get your groove on, you want to do some karaoke, yay. you come to District 8. Because in Vietnam, after a few beer, we are always in the mood for singing. And singing. the more beer we drink, the better voice we sing we have. But I know it's just what we sing. <laughs> I'm terrible with karaoke. You don't want to hear me singing. I love singing, but I wasn't born with a good voice. <laughs> so you like to sing in the shower then? Yeah, I'm a shower singer. Shower singer. So we have arrived, guys, to our barbecue spot here. It's really cool. Hello. You see the hand on the goat over there? Oh yeah, you can see some goat just hanging there. The goat is considered something really expensive in Vietnam. So like uh, when the local have goat, we want to make sure it's the real one and the fake one. Oh. So the restaurant, they usually hand on the real goat with the scour. You make like the kilogram, you pay the bill, they give you the real. You cook it yourself, so no one in between. So basically that making sure that you're getting your goat meat and not some fake yeah, like meat. Popular, uh, pig. Which is much cheaper, I guess. Mm. Is goat quite expensive? Very expensive. Okay. And later we're gonna serve you like the more expensive pot of goat. You see the goat breast. So you can see the goat just over here, guys, hanging just there. And uh, you have actually some football on, so it's quite nice. 
And where are we going to sit? So we may move the table here because I'm afraid that the noise from the television is making it hard for you to fall. Okay, sure. They set up the table for us already, but I tell them to move it here. Okay, because of the football, yeah. Yeah, this one is the mountain chocolate sauce. Yeah, with chili oil on top, you can dip it with the gold meat. Yeah, and this one, when you use this, you can mix it up. And this one is the chili salt with lime. We can use this with the brown or beef. So Nong and Hong has organizes the feast. Right now we've got some morning glory. Hong is preparing. As always, like pretty much throughout this tour, she's always preparing something with Nong. And uh, we actually got this local drink here. We do have the uh, two bodyguards and the football along in the background, which is perfect for me because I love my football so I can actually eat and watch the football. And uh, we've got Sting. It's like a local drink. Let's try this out. You know the local, they love mm. here to, uh, they love to come here to eat and drink and when they have like, because they have the Swiss ring with the football game and then like they got a bet on the game and then the loser will pay for the drink. Oh, for the meal, for and the drinks or? For the drinks. Oh, for the drinks, okay. You heard them say, yo, we spent the for one drink. Okay. <laughs> Talking about drinks, this is like, um, tastes like raspberry? Yeah, is that right? It's really, uh, it's really nice. It's like um, a flavored raspberry soda. Delicious. So this is for the uh, goat. And the prawn. So we've got goat, beef, and prawn coming up. We have some morning glory. Is it normal to have the morning glory before the meat comes, or do you have it together? Oh uh, yeah, right. Because uh, before so going to the mandis, we usually uh, have like this. Because it's like uh, the the way to refresh our tea before going to uh, the mandis here has a lot of tea, have a lot of flavor. Okay, so it's like a kind of a so palate cleanser. The appetizer. Appetizer. And no one is to compare with the barbecue meat later because in Vietnam we eat really healthy. So when it comes to meat, they always some vegetable to combine together, and then you dip in a very best sauce to increase all. Of the flavor of the food. Okay, so the morning glory is a palate cleanser. Yeah. Before you have the meat. Appetizer. Okay, Appetizer. let's uh, get our chopsticks and grab some of this morning glory. Let's spin that around. Mm. Delicious, it's garlicky. I love the garlic flavor. Mm. I love it when the vegetables are smothered in garlic you know because like, uh, they leave all of the leaf and just keep the stem and then they stir fry on the high heat to make sure it's still crunchy but still remain its green color and that's what it's melting in your mouth uh, crunchy yeah and we have two types of garlic and this one when we stir fry before we stir fry we you uh, uh keep the whole garlic like this you, know, oh, you can see the whole right. garlic here. And there's one in the fried garlic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like fried garlic with the morning glory. Oh, delicious. Crunchy. Mm. Delicious. Nice. Yeah, and now we have the man dish here. This one is the goat meat. So can you guess what part of the goat is? Is it the breast? Yeah, right, the breast. Yeah, the sexy part. Yeah, <laughs> I, I only knew that because these ladies shared that with me earlier on. I remembered. Yeah, right. This one is the goat bread marinated with tomato tofu sauce and Coca Cola. Do you know why? What with Coca Cola? Yeah, right. What? With the goat, the goat meat is right. with Coca Cola. Okay, interesting. Be because when it comes to goat, and most people think of something smelly and chewy. So the Coca-Cola helps to serve all of that product. Okay, so it gives it like a salt to smelly sweet. issues. It makes it sweeter. Yeah, it's sweet and softer. So Nong's actually cooking the goat breast for us on this kind of stove here. So I'm a professional. Oh, professional, absolutely <laughs> professional Nong. That's okay, Sato. Let's go, let's go, yeah. <laughs> Vietnam scored on the uh, television. I'm having a great time. Carolina doesn't like football that much. No, it's a nice atmosphere. <laughs> when... I'm not interested in the football, I'm interested in the food. <laughs> so my attention's being drawn between the beautiful food over here and just behind us the football.
All right. So the main course has arrived. I have no idea what's inside of me at home. Can you guess? Uh, Which animal is going to jump out? I, I'm guessing beef. No. No pork. Some scary animal. Okay. Snake. Oh, uh, snake? Are we eating snake on this tour? <laughs> so to be honest, this one is the highlight dish of this restaurant. So like they use the hot season board and then they add the butter crab in the wasabi leaf at the bottom. Okay. So when you eat it, you always smell the butter, but you don't feel the rizzy of butter. Ah. And then inside, there are lots of like uh, different types of mushroom. And then the more fresh tofu. Because like you do not eat people. What is it? What is inside of there, guys? It's really hot now. It's very hot. <laughs> and they have some like uh, green pepper, so it smells really good. And then they crack it in the silver paper, so all of like the natural sweet of the mushroom, it will come and cover the ingredient. Okay, so what actually is inside of here? I, I, so like uh, the most fresh tofu, tofu. And, and different types of mushroom. Okay, so it's tofu mm. mushrooms and you've got some kind of green peppercorn. So Hong is hard at work here cooking our feast. She's got, uh, this is the beef. This is the veal. Oh, the veal. Oh, veal. Oh, veal. Okay. Okay. Juicy and tender and is it marinated with the uh, chili oil and garlic. And then you dip it together with the chili grass song for the really balanced flavors. Mm. So we still got some of the morning glory here. And actually here we have the goat breast just here that's cooked. And we actually combine it with the leaves. So Nong was just teaching us how to eat it with the leaves. You got mint leaf and also the fish leaf. So uh, I'll let Carolina. So what you're supposed to do is to take the leaf, take a bit of goat, and it like... Uh, you got it, you got it. I think just hold like it all together. And then dip, dip it into the tofu sauce. Tofu sauce. And then... Mm. Which uh, leaf did you have? Did you have the fish leaf? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many flavors. The meat is so juicy. And I, I think that you will like the tofu sauce. Okay. I gotta give this a go, but I have got one hand, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I'm gonna try with the chopsticks in one hand. All right, let's get uh, a leaf here. This is the mint. This is mint. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's quite a lot of mint there. Let's try and find uh, a small one here. There we go. I'm gonna put it into the bowl. I'm gonna grab a piece of the goat meat. Okay, this is really testing out my chopstick skills. I'm gonna dip it into this tofu sauce. Mmm, I really like that. The tofu is like a... The tofu sauce is like fermented? Fermented, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it a homemade like, fermented tofu sauce? Mm -hmm. And now the beef is already ready to Ooh, let's try and it you should have it together with the star fruit because the beef is naturally sweet, the star fruit is sour ah. and then you dip it in uh, the salt and then it's salty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have this one. Yeah. Okay, so we got this beautiful veal. We have it together with the star fruit? Yep. Like this? Yep. Okay, I got it, I got it. There we go. And then, the and then there's salt. Okay, like that is okay? Yeah, it's Am a I doing a good job? Yeah. Okay, it's ready? Try this one out. Mm. Such a good combination. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was like an explosion of flavors in my mouth. Right. The star fruit is very like citrusy, but like sour. Sour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, usually when you go to the restaurant to have steak, mm -hmm. they will have a few options for you to choose. Red, medium rare, right? Or well done. But I saw the only one level. Is it my level? Your level. Yeah, the driver level. It depends on our mood. So when we're in good mood, you have good beef. When we're not in good mood, then maybe the beef is not good. <laughs> so the question is, are you in a good mood or in a bad mood right now? We're in a good mood today because I have so lovely guests tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so on this tour, you can actually choose what you want to include in the tour. So if you don't like, for example, seafood like me or coriander, they will go and organize a tour around your basically requirements for what you like to eat. So if you have a nut allergy, you're lactose intolerant, you're vegetarian, they will organize the tour basically to your liking. So we do have a prawn. 
which is for Carolina. <laughs> and uh, we've got one already. We've got shrimp on the barbie there. Oh, it's a lovely, so next time you can do it for your girlfriend. <laughs> so perfect. So Hong's helping out, she's the camera woman right now. And uh, we have these beautiful tofu pieces, and it's actually mixed with lots of different types of mushroom over here. So you've got this one type of mushroom. What, Hong, what type of mushroom is this one? Enoki. Enoki, Enoki, Enoki. mushroom. And uh, this one, is it maybe like a chestnut mushroom? I don't know. The king oyster. Oh, king oyster mushroom, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for that tofu just over there. Yep. Be careful, it's very hot. Very hot, okay. I can see some of the green peppercorn in here as well. Mmm, mmm. So creamy inside. Hot. Mm. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Hot, hot, hot. Mm. Oh, that's so delicious. The, Taste of the mushrooms, a different taste kind of yeah. infuses with the uh, tofu. And it's very creamy inside. And I love how you how have these. This one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Different types of mushrooms as well. Mm. I love tofu and mushrooms, mm. I think this is my favorite. So delicious. Mm. Good job, Hong. Come, <laughs> come, lady, come, a woman. Okay, you guys have to eat. You've been cooking for us, you have to eat as well. <laughs> it's time for some fun and games, guys. We're actually going to be playing a chopstick game. So, do you want to explain the rules of the chopstick game? Okay, so we will pick up a nut from the bow and pass it to you. Okay. And once you receive the nut, your job is to stay there and move it closer to the bottom in front of you and then drop it in. So you drop it in here. And if you get sick first, you will win again. And if you win, you get the prize. And why a thousand? But I will let you know the currency later. <laughs> Hopefully, USD currency. <laughs> so, me and Carolina are going to be competing against each other. Uh, Nong and Hong are going to be passing over the peanuts to us. Yeah, you have a local partner now. Okay. All right. So, our bodyguard is going to help us to film. Perfect. Okay. So, can you check the angle? Yes. So, um, okay, let's check the angle. It's actually a good idea. So maybe I will, maybe like, <laughs> right. here, is it okay? Perfect. All right. Are we beautiful? Are we looking beautiful? Yes, we are. Yeah. All right, so we, should we do a countdown? Yay. Okay. We count one, two, three, go. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. All right. There we go. One. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, 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 four, five, 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 I thought, I thought, I generally thought I was going to win there. You are a gentleman. Yes. Oh yes, I was letting them win. Yes. I was. <laughs> the chopstick skills are better than yours. Yes, to be honest, the chopstick skills, Caroline is what it is time. But the matter of truth, is it in US dollars or is it in... Oh yeah, well, what's yeah, the currency? The bride here. <laughs> Thank you. And let me show you the okay. bride, the EXO chopstick champion. Oh. <laughs> but uh, do we get, does Carolina get both of these or? Yes, for you both. Even, you even the loser together. gets a prize. Yes, even the loser gets a prize. <laughs> Exo champion. Leader. It's actually quite fun. Like I, I would play that like just on a regular. Uh... There we go. You pinned it. Yes. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. Ah, so we now have some of these fruits from the market. Eat the white part only. Okay, so don't eat the peel. Eat the white part. So this is the milky apple. Milky mm -hmm. apple. Right. So that's the inside of the milky apple. Okay. Yeah, and this one is thought right. When you eat it, you take it out. It tastes like it tastes like uh, me melon. No, melon. Yeah, yeah, melon. It tastes very similar to a melon. It's very delicious. Really like it. It's sweet. It's but not too sweet, and it's watery. Yeah, it's kind of like very soft. That's delicious. Mm. That's why it's milky because it's kind of like soft and gooey inside. So we're trying this uh, fruit here that we bought from the market earlier again. This one I've never tried in my life. This is yeah. super interesting. It looks like almost like crocodile skin on the outside. And you need to. Also <laughs> I like your idea, crocodiles. Crocodiles. <laughs> 
So you have to take the seeds out first. Yes. I know, so usually we just eat it and then we view a lot. Ah, okay, so like watermelon. Let us see how it is. You can just spit the seeds out. Okay. So it's just the skin on this side you can eat. Uh, usually we take the skin out first and then we can eat the meat and then like swallow the seeds. Oh, you can swallow it. Oh, spit. Spit, spit, yes. Alright. Okay. Uh, yeah, go for it. There's a seed. Mm. It's like pineapple and lychee flavor, something like this. I've you never like tried. It? It's very good. It's very good. I've never tried anything like this, so that's why I was confused. So we're now in District Seven, guys. This used to be slumland, and actually it was developed by the Taiwanese. So we just came from Taiwan to Vietnam <laughs> and actually they uh, call this Korea town here because there's a lot of Koreans who live here. So it's very modern. You can see the roads are quite uh, wider wide. and you can see the big apartment buildings at the top there. We're now in District 4 guys. Still plenty of traffic everywhere. Hello. <laughs> I love the Vietnamese people, everyone's so happy and smiling. But of course, still lots of traffic. Well, we're in District 4, this is the party area of Saigon. Yeah, let's go party! Let's go drink some beer. <laughs> I don't really like beer, but when you're in Vietnam, beer is the drink of choice for the Vietnamese. Yeah, this is a more popular drink because of the weather here is already hot. So cold beer is perfect. Cold beer is perfect. And how strong is the beer? What um, percentage do you know? Uh, no, I'm not sure because I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so Hong doesn't drink and I'm not a beer drinker, but when in Vietnam, you gotta drink beer. Is it, what's the most popular beer? Is it Bintang? Saigon beer. Oh, Saigon beer. We are in Saigon. Wait, so Bintang, where is Bintang from? Is that Vietnamese? Um, Bintang. Okay, no, it's not Vietnamese. I got that all wrong. <laughs> I think that's maybe Indonesia. So we only have like Saigon beer and then the triple free beer. It's okay. called Ba Ba Ba. Oh wait, yes, Bing Tang is definitely Indonesia. <laughs> we spent two months there. I apologize to my Vietnamese audience. Saigon beer is what we're going to be drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and you actually can get a lot of seafood on the streets here. So District 4 is known for having very good quality seafood. Everyone's just sitting down. All over, all over either side of the roads, literally people are just enjoying themselves you can see here yeah got seafood over there so if you're not like me and you love your seafood come to district four are we parking up yeah okay so it looks like we've arrived to our next location okay Again, with a helmet. Got helmet hair here. <laughs> you need some mirror? I got a mirror. Looking good, looking good. I hate my hair after wearing a helmet. <laughs> they call it the helmet hair. Helmet hair, that's a, exactly. You know when the girl go to the party here, it's a very headache. Because you cannot have your hair style unless you want a helmet hair. And if you, but, uh, you wear a body tight dress, you have to sit right shadow. With the getting off and on the motorbike, you have, very to sit, you have to sit like sideways, like this. Yay. You can't sit like like I'm sitting on the I back. Do it. <laughs> you, you can't do what? You, so how do you sit then if you're wearing a skirt? Oh, so I'm go like you have to sit like that. Oh, looking very elegant. <laughs> okay. So where where are we heading to now? A seafood restaurant. Okay. So. Seafood, I can see plenty of it. Oh, Not the biggest fan. Really good. They okay. Dried squid. So you have a lot of seafood just over here. <laughs> this is dried squid. <laughs> you like snails. We've even got some crab legs over there, or crab claws actually. I'm not gonna lie, guys. This is this is like my worst nightmare because I don't like seafood. <laughs> but oh, <laughs> we're gonna serve you the non-seafood dishes, but I'm sure oh, you will like it. Okay, so we're having non-seafood dishes. Carolina, do you want some snails? You sure? Are you sure? Okay. So uh, let's have a seat. Are we sitting down? Are we going this way? 
Oh, so we're not actually eating there? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's all their restaurant, but the lighting and background here better. Okay. So we're now at this restaurant here. I've got a sneaky feeling we're going to be having fried chicken. We can go you want. Beautiful. Yeah, ah, our right. security guards. These guys are amazing. I love how they're supporting them on the tour. Basically making their life easier. All right. You can sit here. So everything's kind of ready for us. Oh. <laughs> I love how flawless everything goes. Everything is so smooth. And it's, they've really thought about, okay, even this look, they, yeah, no one's they getting it out so we can clean our hands. So let me show you the sauce. So like uh, we have the sweet living sauce and this one is the black pepper sauce mm. with the uh, chilies and kumquat. So it's a, a kum, kumquat. Yeah. yeah. Kumquat. Do you know like uh, in Vietnam, we are the number one of exporter and producer of the black pepper in the world. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, our black pepper is very famous. So ladies, what do we have here? You want to take it through Nong? Yeah? Yeah, this one is sweet and sour pork ribs. Sweet and sour yeah. pork ribs. And with some vegetable like cucumber, uh, potato, oh no, no, tomato, uh, tomato, 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 tomato yeah. and onion. Nice. Yeah. And this one is a chicken wing with um, some vegetable too, like onion and some pepper on top. Looks and delicious. this one is the rye powder, like the cake. We will deep fry with a little bit crunchy uh, garlic on top and we eat uh, with papaya. It's like a fried rice cake. Yeah. Okay. And then we have lots of different condiments. Oh wow, we have some sugar cane. Wait, did he go outside to buy this? Okay. So, when you've got your own security detail like the lads, the boys I call them over there, uh, they actually go out and get things for guests if they want them. So if there's things that are not available at the restaurant, they'll go out and buy you a sugar cane. I thought they were serving this at the restaurant, but... Is it a to free <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. So we have the one. So sugar cane, it's always a favorite of mine, especially when it's hot. It's, it's quite good to drink sugar cane in when it's hot, right? Yeah. It cools you down. All right. So we got the chopsticks. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had the sauce already. All right, beautiful. So let's uh, try this one here. What is the vegetable on there? Uh, papaya. 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 Yeah. Okay. So it's rice cake and the papaya. So let's give this a go. Mm. Oh, that's. I like that. That was really good. Mm. Crunchy. It's very crispy on the outside, soft in the inside. It's sweet. Mm. I like the papaya flavor there. Really good. There's obviously peanuts on top. Yeah. Let me move this sugar cane out of the way. It's so big. Where should I put this one? Let's put it over there. Perfect. So, the rice cake, super delicious. Okay, I am eyeing up this uh, pork rib. So this is a sweet and sour pork rib. Yep. Is there a, you just eat it or do you have it with any other sauces? Like, uh, you just have it first and then if you want to like uh, train the flavor and then you can dip it. You can dip it in. Okay, I'm gonna go for this piece here. This one looks like a nice fatty piece here. <laughs> There's going to be a bone in here, I think. Mm -hmm. This is like a pork rib. Nice kind of fatty meat. There's no bone. No, no bone. Mm -hmm. There's the chicken. Looks very juicy. I'll try it like this. Mm. Very good. You will like it. I love the chicken. Mm -hmm. Very juicy and it's marinated in some kind of sauce. You know, in Vietnam, everything is very little. From the chicken to the banana and the chairs on the table. It's really good. So you know you're in a local place where there's noise happening in the background. You've got a family just over there. But I'm going to try this uh, chicken here. So this chicken is fried chicken with black fish sauce and black pepper. And black pepper is famous in Vietnam because you're the biggest exporters of black pepper yeah, in the world. In the world. Yeah. world. Alright, so let's try out this fried chicken. 
Uh huh. It's nice and crispy. Very subtle kind of ingredients, but lots of flavor. And juicy. That's what I love about Vietnamese food. It's like very simple ingredients, but full of flavor. How did you eat? <laughs> oh, we got a new dish. So this one is. Is it a local flower? In Vietnamese, it's called ping li flower. Mm -hmm. I really don't know the name in English. And then like they stir fry with the fried garlic and black pepper and you dip it in the soya sauce with chili. Chili. Wow. So you just grab it like this? Yeah. Okay. This is the you same. have it with this sauce. Yeah. Let's grab that. This is a, some kind of flour. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to dip it into this uh, soy sauce with chili. It's really yummy. Mm. Alright. You like this? Mm. Okay. I love all of the vegetables here in Vietnam. Mm. Similar to Morning Glory, and the soy sauce gives it a bit of saltiness, and then you got a bit of kick from the chili. I love how fresh the food here is in yeah. Vietnam. Amazing. Of all the places we've traveled to in Southeast Asia, there are just so many fresh yeah. vegetables and herbs. I think that in Vietnam, we're very lucky because we have the typical weather that allows us to grow many different types of herbs, and, and then when we combine with our food, it makes the Vietnamese cuisine very famous in the world. Is it, yummy. And, and mm. I'm assuming very healthy as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and you guys look so beautiful and young. That's probably why. Because of Alfie. Because of food, yes. <laughs> Dessert time, guys. We've got our security detail. There we go. So we're going down this very narrow alleyway. This is why they have the interview on the bike to make sure you can drive because you're taking people like us through these small streets and they're even selling food on the side of the streets as well here it's still wide and now it's gonna smaller and smaller it, and smaller wait this was wide so this yep. is getting smaller here okay this oh wow this street is even smaller <laughs> is this one way no there's two ways there's people coming from I love this. I don't know, there's some beautiful charm about going through small alleyways. I feel like I'm in uh, another world. You are in the Hunger Game now. I'm in the where, sorry? The Hunger Game. <laughs> in the Hunger Games. This is a game about like uh, getting lost in uh, many local districts. Oh. And you have to find a way to escape. <laughs> And here come the local night market for dessert. So this is, I'm assuming, where we're going to be having dessert. Yep. And these like local street vendors here. I love how everything's lit up so that you're not just sitting and eating in darkness. Now we're gonna park our bar in a. Oh, it smells really good over here. The food. Okay, we're hello. parking over. Oh, hello over here. They're already waiting for us. Okay, thank you, Hong. Have a little bit of a chit chat, are you girls? <laughs> Security detail. Oh, yes, please, thank you. So, this is chair? Chair. 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 And Ha Trang is the name of the owner. Ah, so Ha Trang is the name of the owner. Yeah, so good <laughs> So what exactly is it? Like, okay, so like to the best of my knowledge, I will try to translate to you. Okay. This one is the young coconut. So we've got some young coconuts. Uh, lychee. Lychee. Long one. Long one. Yeah, and this one is the lotus. Lotus. Yeah, and this one is the coconut gem. So it's like a mixture of different fruits. Yeah, and then like coconut milk and the ice and tapioca, which are beans. Okay, so you got a, some beans, tapioca, fruits, and it's all kind of combined. And, and we even have like the typical fruit with the eyes and the sugar juice. And so they're combining everything together and then you're having it with ice. I can see there's a bucket of ice just over here. Yay. Okay, so... So you can choose whatever you want to have. 
Yeah, so now you just let it know. But like, uh, I I think this one is really good too. The fruit one inside the Vietnamese cherry and the dried fruit. Mm. Yeah, and then a lot of my guests they also like the young like yeah, uh, coconut too. And then if you want more traditional, you should have this one, a mix of beans and tapioca yeah. and cook in the coconut meal and add some peanuts. For me, I will definitely go for the traditional one. Yeah. I love a traditional and one. And for you? And so I would like to have something with the young coconut. This one is our one. She's adding, is that peanuts? Uh, yeah, peanuts. Oh, peanuts, okay. Rồi, một cái là cho thuốc nốt với lại uh, à, xương... Đây, đây là dừa nước nha chị. À, dừa nước nó lộn, dừa nước với lại uh, xương, xương sáo. Em ăn cái gì? Our uh, translators, just making sure that we're getting uh, the oh, traditional, the most traditional version. And uh, we're also going for another concoction here. That's got the young coconut, some syrup. I think she's adding into there. Ăn ngọt không chị? Dạ, ăn thôi được ngọt quá chị. Ngọt vừa thôi. What did she say? You want even sweeter? I say no. no. <laughs> oh, more sugar? No. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's another thing. Wait. You know that the reason why Vietnamese people is not very sweet. We have sweet tooth. Yeah, sweet tooth. Because even with like fruit juices, they add sugar to the fruit yeah, juices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fruit's so already sweet. It's yeah, so even smaller now. Okay, so we're sitting on these tiny chairs again. We call so it the real Vietnamese period. Where are you, you, you sit? I don't care. Oh, with the security guy, he's always standing. I feel bad. So okay. I saw like no motorbike, like, I hit you. Oh, right. <laughs> but uh, he can sit down, honestly, like he can relax. <laughs> the boys are bringing us the chair. Yours. So this Your one is the, uh, is this the traditional one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's hard to tell which one's which. This is the yeah. young coconut. Ah, oh, this one's got the young coconut there. Okay, we're gonna do yo. Oh. Yo. Yo. Yeah, say yo. Yo. Because they say, Mot Thai Ba Yo! <laughs> and then, like, the louder you say, the more beer you have to drink. Oh, the more beer you have to drink. We like the beer culture here, so when we go drinking, we count up to three, then we say yo, we mean cheers. And then the people on the table, they hear it. Then we try to say yo louder to compete with you, to catch your attention. And that's how we connect and make friends when we go out drinking. Awesome. Okay, Caroline is doing her Instagram. And I think I'm going to film with my right hand and try and use my left hand. Do we need to mix it all? Yeah. We have to mix, mix it? it okay, so maybe let's mix it. You know, um, on the day off, I usually come here. Mm. Oh, this is your day off spot? Right. So this I is a young here. people place. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, um, next to you, it's like the the place, the batter here, they buy some soup. Yeah. So this one. Oh, here they got some soup just over here, yeah. yeah. In Vietnamese, we saw soups as well. Okay. Yeah, soup in Vietnamese and soup in English. Yeah. So these spots that they're taking us to are the ones that you actually like yourself. So they're not just taking you to, you know, the popular spots. Okay. And you know the one, the egg. Oh, bal yeah. is it balut? Yeah, balut. Yeah, right. Balut. Okay, guys, we this we aren't sure mean. about trying balut, but if we if you guys comment that we want to have balut. Maybe we'll try it. It's like an e embryo inside, like inside. Is it delicious or do you like the taste of it? Like, uh, can you eat duck? Duck, yes. Can you eat egg? Yes. Yeah, so duck egg. The texture oh, of the it's like a duck. <laughs> okay, interesting. Do you like balut? Yeah, I really like balut. You like balut, okay. Yeah, but uh, until now, when I grow up and I know obviously about the meaning of uh, duck and uh, I give up my manner. Okay, so you, you don't eat it anymore? Yeah, right. Okay. It gets so scared. But we can eat some che. So let's uh, try this out. Is this mixed okay? It's okay? And then I'll go from the bottom. You know, I heard from my mom. And, uh, yeah, when my mom get pregnant, she said that if, uh, if we eat a lot of the it's very good for our hair. For the baby hair. For the baby hair. Yeah. <laughs> Vietnamese people, they have a lot of like weird things that they believe. Yeah. And then like right now, and the, uh, for the younger generation, we Google to make sure like correct. You know it's right. So if you eat balut when you're pregnant, apparently it's good for the baby's hair. We have to Google this. But this is absolutely delicious. I love the fact that there's peanuts in here. And it's actually very refreshing because you have the eyes. 
I actually love the young coconut yeah, in this. I don't know. And the black jelly. I have no yeah, idea what's inside. Like like I like the texture as well. There's some crunchiness from the peanuts, jelliness from whatever they're adding in there. <laughs> it's sweet, ice, refreshing. Definitely thumbs up for the che. <laughs> che. There we go. Teamwork, teamwork, yeah, teamwork. 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 Yay. There you go. Okay, I think we have all of us in here. Just want to say a big thank you to the EXO team, to our security detail, to our lovely guides here. We've had such a fantastic time. There'll be a link in the description if you want to book the EXO foodie tour, or any of the tours. This is EXO Tours. Awesome. Guys, do not forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.